Bonjour Year 11. So we're doing our second lesson of describing uh, self and relationships. So we're looking mainly at family today and personality and describing whether or not we get on with people. But you're going to be doing a lot of work that will build up to being able to improve your translation and writing skills. So this is a good topic for when we need to do some assessment in the coming week and months um, to look at your writing grades. This is a good one to choose because people always have plenty to say on their family and friends rather than trying to think of uh, opinions on the environment, that sort of thing. OK, um, so uh, what you need to do, we're mainly working off a worksheet today. So you can print that or you can complete it on the computer. That's up to you. Um, and then the listening tasks later on in the lesson, you'll do that in either your book or on Word or whatever you like to work. OK. OK, so let's begin. First of all, before we jump into the worksheet activities, all you need to do for this is write down somewhere A to D. We've got four uh, categories here. Description physique. So this means physical description, see. Mauvais rapport and bon rapport. So we know bon means good. That might trigger your memory of what mauvais means. So bad. And rapport. If we're talking about what to the topic is, what do you think rapport might mean? And we actually use that word in English. You say you have a good rapport with somebody, you have a good relationship, okay? And then obviously le mariage, okay? So what you need to do is read all of these 16 sentences and you're going to put them into one of the four categories. So for example, if you're skim reading across these, the first category that is linked to physical description, or the first box, sorry, is number five. Je ressemble à mon père car on a tous les deux les yeux bleus. Even if you didn't know what je ressemble means, that, but you can hopefully remember the les yeux bleus, blue eyes, so that's talking about a physical description. So that's why number five goes in category E, okay? So write A to D and put all of the numbers into each category. By doing that, you're going to need to basically translate all of these, or at least have a rough idea about what each is talking about, okay? So uh, pause the video and do that then. Okay, so the, here are our answers. So the physical description is five. Il est, so this means I look like, I resemble my dad because we've both got blue eyes. He is very small or like really small, tout petit, okay? and really cute. And number 12, I look like my sister. Je ressemble à ma sœur. Bad relationships then. Il ne respecte pas mes idées. He doesn't respect my ideas. On se dispute tout le temps. We argue all the time. Il est tout à fait pénible et il m'énerve. He is completely annoying and he gets on my nerves. I have a lot of responsibilities but no freedom. Pas de liberté. My older brother, we saw this word again last week, my older brother believes, he believes to be superior. In other words, believes himself to be superior, okay? And ma mère est stricte dans un sens. My mum is strict in one sense, so might be strict with some things and not others. Good relationships, I get on well with my mum. Number seven, she treats me like an adult. Fourteen, my, sis, my younger sister, any older, cadet younger or cadet if it's a boy. My younger sister knows how to listen to me. Uh, and 16, on, on discute ensemble et on se respect. We discuss together, we chat together, and we respect one another. And then marriage, for me, marriage is important. Number two, Rit, in the future, I would like to be married. And number 11, I'm looking for somebody very rich who I can marry, okay? So that's jogged our memory with a little bit of vocabulary there, and some of it we will see in today's lesson. For the next few activities, you will need to be using the worksheet, so make sure you've downloaded that below the video. Okay, task one on the worksheet then, you've got 10 sentences that are all muddled up. What you need to do is unjumble those and then translate them into English. Okay, so take as long as you need for this. You, you know, you're not on live, if some of you are going to do this quicker than others. If you're stuck, so try it first to reorder the sentence, get it to make sense. You know what the first word is going to be because they're all capitalized. So if you're stuck, if you could, after I've explained this, you can try it first and then unpause the video and the English sentences will come up. So what they're supposed to be, in other words, the translations. So then you will not need to do B, but B will help you then 
reorder the French sentence. Okay, you obviously go relatively in order of difficulty to a certain extent. The longer one's going to be harder to do at least anyway. Okay, so off you go. Either write, you can either write your answers in your book, or you can write them on the sheet or type them on the sheet. Okay, so if you are have done a few, but there's a few you're really stuck on, you don't know what this sentence is supposed to say. You've tried reordering the French words. Here is the English. This is what they're supposed to mean. So if you've completed, you can now check your translations at least. Then unpause again to check the French once you've done them all. Okay, so we've got Elle est polie. Mon père est sympa. Je m'entends bien avec ma soeur. C'est l'horreur, mon frère. Je, je ne m'entends pas bien avec mon demi-frère. C'est sympa avec ma grand-mère. Elle est souvent égoïste. Il peut être sociable. Je m'entends bien avec ma tante car elle est drôle. Et je ne m'entends pas bien avec mon cousin car il est pénible. Ok? So, uh, check your answers and then let's go on to task 2. Ok, so in task 2 we're focusing now on just the adjectives for the next 10 sentences. The first five, you are circling the correct form of the adjective at the end of the sentence, okay? Try it first, and if you're not sure why you're supposed to pick a certain adjective, you have a help box here to think about, okay? Okay, so if you've been stuck, just remember you're looking for whether or not the person we're talking about. So I get on well with my cousin, because in my opinion, she is very. Therefore, I'm thinking about a plural. It's not a, a feminine, sorry, not a plural one here. If something is feminine, we add an E. If something is plural, sorry. so if something is plural, so you add the S, okay? And then there are exceptions to that. If there's already an E on the end, like sever, you wouldn't add another E talking about a woman. Um, if there is an R on the end, like travailleur, that R is going to become SE. Same for X, if it was something like paresseux, lazy. And then if it's something like cruel, cruel, the L is going to become double L before you add an E, okay? So, uh, let's check the answers then, if you have completed. So we've got gentil with the L-E, because it's a girl. Marron, it's a boy, so we don't need to add anything extra. Sever already has an E, we don't need the S, there's only one. The boys are idiots, uh, the brothers. We don't need an E, because they're not girls. We need the S, because it's more than one. And travailleurs, we're talking about girls. Les copines, not copains. The si friends of my sister are very hard working. Need the E and the S, okay? Part two then, or part B of this, you're then making the adjective agree. They're changing it if it needs to, to match the noun. So do you or do you not for each one need to add an extra letter? So for these, if you're writing them out, just write the letter that's missing or write um, the whole adjective out. But if you're filling it in on the sheet, you're just filling in what's missing or not, okay? Okay, off you go. Okay, so first one then, we add nothing because it's talking about a boy. My little brother is very naughty, really naughty. I think that his mum or her mum is intelligent. We need the extra E because it's a girl. Your parents are not very chatty. They're plural, so we need the S on Bavar. I don't like your cousin because in my opinion, she's too impatient. We need the extra E because it's about a girl. I know it's about a girl because it's ta, cousine with the E and Eli. Your uncle and his friends, we're talking about two boys, are not very hardworking. It's got the masculine spelling of friend and uncle, we just need an S, not S-E-S -E at the end, okay? Okay, task three. Now what you're going to be doing is something a little bit different. You're going to find and underline the wrongly translated words in each English translation and then rewrite the French translation to match the English. So I'll explain with the first one. Okay, so, ma mère s'appelle Sylvie. Let's check with the English translation. My mother's name is Sylvie. Elle, elle a les cheveux courts, frisés et roux. The English then should match the French. She has short, straight, blonde hair. Straight away, I can see that, I can't see the word blonde in there. I cannot see the word straight, but I can see short. Okay, so therefore in the English, you can underline the French as well if you want, but in the English, you would underline straight and blonde because they don't match frisé and all. Let's continue. She is very slim, elle est assez mince, et porte toujours des lunettes and often wears glasses. 
Well, I know that toujours is always, so therefore I would underline often, okay? Then I need to rewrite the French translation. So I don't change this to curly and red, and I don't change this to always. You leave the English the same. It is the French that you need to rewrite and out and correct. So you can either, in the gap that it's left underneath each one, rewrite the whole thing, changing the bits that are wrong, or just change the bits that are wrong. So you can write out, elle a les cheveux courts, change that to straight and blonde, elle, and then leave a gap, a pot, and then put off and des lunettes. Okay, any words that you've forgotten, you'd word reference to help you. We'll look back over last week's lesson, some of them we recap last lesson. Try and do this first without any support, without any help. After you've had a go at all of them, if you still want some help, play the video and then I will show you next the mistakes in the English underlined, okay? Okay, so if you're ready to have some help, here we go. So in the, here are the first three. So we've already gone over the first, that is straight, blonde, uh, very slim, often, okay? Uh, and then number two and three are there. So those are the mistakes in number two and three. So that's the part you need to correct in the French. Like, clever, always polite, always there for me. That's what's wrong in the French. That's what's different in the French, rather. So you need to change the French of that one. Same for number three. When you're ready, and pause to check number four and five, and then we'll look at the French. So here's the wrong English in four and five that doesn't match the French. Pause it if you need still if you're still working on the French, and when you're ready, unpause to look at the answers. Okay, so correcting your own now. This is what the French should say. We did this one earlier, but red et blanc, and it was three answers so we didn't talk about before. And souvent is the word for often. J'aime ma meilleure amie Karima car elle est très intelligente with an e because it's about a girl. Et toujours polie with an e. Je m'entends bien avec elle car elle Elle est toujours là pour moi. You might have struggled more with that part. So well done if you worked that out. Mon copain Jérôme est plutôt au AC. Either of those means quite amusant. De plus, je peux toujours compter sur lui. Par contre, il se dispute parfois, quelquefois. Both of those means sometimes. Avec son père et ses stupides bêtes idiots. All of those means stupid. À mon avis. Okay, hopefully this is giving you some ideas of how you can describe your family as well. Because rather than just saying, she's funny, she's nice, we've got lovely phrases here like, they're always there for me. Okay, I can always count on them. Or I can't count on him or her, That's that sort of thing. Let's check four and five. So I don't get on well with, je ne m'entends pas bien avec mes grands-parents, car je trouve qu'ils sont sévères. Is how we need to spell the plural of strict. Ils me critiquent souvent. So there's been a lot of words of often and always in these. Again, that should show you that we need you to be putting in frequency words. It might not be that they you they always criticize you, so therefore writing just email critique, they criticize me. If you then add a frequency word like often or sometimes, usually, that increases your grade, okay? And then the two words are quite again, plutôt or assez. Moi, ma petite sœur a les cheveux longs et bruns et les yeux verts. So changing the colour there and the petite. Elle ressemble à ma tante for auntie. On se dispute parfois ou quelquefois. And surtout is the word for always. Quand elle prend mes CD sans ma permission. Okay? Right, from here you now have a choice. Tasks 4, A and 4, B are the foundation version, and task 5a and 5b are the higher version. If you are higher tier, I would suggest you do both, because um, if, especially if you have the time today, maybe start on the higher, and if you have time, do the foundation as well, because the vocabulary is different. There's no physical descriptions, for example, in the higher, because we would be expecting you to talk more about their personality, getting on with them, than just what they look like, okay? But it is important to know that vocabulary. For foundation tier, obviously start with foundation. Once you've completed it, if you've got time today, you might like to also have a look at the higher, because even if you can't complete all of it, you will learn from it, okay? So for task A on both, you're simply translating into English, okay? And then for task B on both, you are translating into French. Now, if we would have sat the French exam, to this year, the traditional way that it's written, you were, they were, because of 
the restrictions you've had and lockdowns and things, they were taking out the English into French translation. So part B is technically not in the exam anymore. So when the WJC give us some model assessments we can use to help grade you, that won't be in there, I'm assuming, because they said they were taking it out, okay? Um, so even though it might seem, what's the point, because we're not doing this skill, it's still really useful because when you're writing, what you're basically doing is translating. Some of you might feel you're at that level where you aren't translating as you write, so you're able to think of the French word first. But a lot of people, when they're beginning um, and at GCSE level, you will be at that stage where you are thinking what you want to say in English first and then putting it into French. So when you're writing, you are translating at the same time. So it's still a really important skill for us to practice. OK, so if you're on foundation, then do uh, you're translating these into English. Please don't leave gaps. OK, now I'm special, not so much on this because you're actually putting it into English. But in the French, there are a couple of you who have the habit of putting English in pencil or underlining it and leaving it for me to translate. Um, I'm more, more than happy to teach you new words, obviously, but you can't do that in an assessment. Um, you're not going to get any marks for that sentence then. The sentence will then, especially in a translation, be wrong. And in a writing, you're going to be marked down for it. So your translating is just telling you exactly what you need to say. But in a writing, think of something different to say. Don't put the English, OK? Think of another way around it. And while you're home, instead of putting the English, look up the word. Go on wordreference.com because then you learn a new word, OK? So when you're translating into the English and into the French, use word reference. If there's anything in here you can't work out from uh, the context or that you don't remember from memory. The only thing at a glance of this that you might not remember or be able to work out because it looks like the English is caspier. That's a nice adjective for us to be reminded of today. OK, if you are doing the higher, then you can obviously fast forward the video onto higher. If you're doing foundation, pause and then check your answers when you're ready. OK, so this is what they mean. So all of that vocabulary looked like the English. Hopefully you were able to work out most of it. So it's only the word caspier, which is another word for annoying or pain in the neck. Um, that you might not have been able to work out from the context, okay? On to the opposite way then. So now you're translating from English into French. And there's a checklist on your sheet, same as here, that once you've translated into French, this is the kind of thing you need to be looking over when you're in your writing assessments, is have I added all of these things? Have I checked these things before I hand my work in and say, yep, it's done? Have I really looked over it to look for these things, okay? So have a go at translating as much as that if you can, and then check your answers when you're ready. So you've got mon grand frère, mes nerves, is how we say gets on my nerves, literally like nerves me, annoys me, because mm -hmm. il est trop sévère. J'ai les cheveux courts. It's on the ends of all of these adjectives, because you have more than one hair and more than one eye. Okay, j'ai les yeux verts. I don't get on well with my dad. That one's nice and straightforward. I argue rarely with my parents. We need to make sure that pas que links to the il, pas qu'il, and that when we say they are, ils sont. Hopefully you haven't put il est, because that means he is. Okay, il a, ils sont, they are, très sympa, s on the end, because it's plural, because there's more than one. I get on well with my mum. You could put pas que au car. Elle est vraiment amusante. The funny needs to have an e on the end. Or you might have put drôle, and that therefore that already means funny. Okay? Right, next one then, the uh, higher tier. So if you've done the foundation tier, have a little go at this uh, and see if you can spot any vocabulary in here and the other bits you might learn from, okay? If you're higher tier, you're writing this out in English, seeing what you can work out from the context before you look it up in a dictionary, okay? Okay, so in my family, generally get on well, up as far as there would be one mark because I think my parents have a sense of humour. That would be the next mark. Moreover, they treat me as if I was an adult, the third mark. However, or you could have said for moreover, you could have said also or in addition. En revanche is another way to say cependant. However, I have a tendency or I tend to argue with my older sister. That would be one mark or the next mark because she criticises me all the time. And final mark, I'm really fed up with it. So j'en ai marre. 
it is an idiom to say I'm fed up with it, I've had enough of it. And then adding in the vraiment makes it, I've really had enough of it. Okay. All right, next activity then for hire is to translate into French. And just like the foundation, you've got a checklist, so yours is a little bit different. To, you need to put into French. And once you get to the end, check this list here. Okay, go through. You lose lots of marks for not checking these little things. We need to get used to that in our writing. Okay. So I think my grandparents are nicer than, so we're making a comparison. We need to say, I think my grandparents are more nice than my parents. They listen to me. Think about that word me, where that's going to go in terms of the verb when I have problems. My mum, my mother often gets on my nerves and therefore we don't get on well. My dad is very strict, even if, so that might cause you a few problems, either even if, you might need to look that up. He is quite open-minded. So we haven't done open-minded. See if you can work out a way to say that or not lock it up. And understanding, we have done that. Um, we definitely did it the first time because it was in your very first assessment from time to time. I love him. Think about whether him is going to go. Same with the me. Listen to me. Okay. Very sorry if you can hear lots of noise in the background. Um, I have limited time when I can film these. My boys are making a lot of noise. Um, so I apologise. Okay. Pause and have a go at this. And then uh, uh, check your answers. Okay. Okay. So let's have a look at this then. So the first mark would have been up as far as here. I think that, je pense que mes grands-parents sont plus sympa. We've got to make sure we've got an S on here because it's plural. I think that they are more nice or you could use gentil que mes parents. You could use parce que or car. But if you've used parce que, you need to remember that that que would link to the il. Parce qu'il m'écoute. And we should have the they ending on écoute. Okay, even though it sounds the same as the he or she ending, écoute, without the NT, there's got to be an NT on there, okay, because it's they. They listen to me when, quand j'ai des problèmes, when I have problems. My mum gets on my nerves, ma mère m'énerve souvent, or souvent m'énerve, you could put the souvent first, et donc, on, on ne s'entend pas bien. Or you could have used alors, on ne s'entend pas bien. Mon père est très sévère, même si, is how you say even if, and that if then would need to join on to the il, même s'il. So même s'il est assez ouvert is the word for open-minded. It just literally means open, okay? Et compréhensif de temps en temps, je l'adore. So the he has to go here, je le adore, and then it joins on, okay? Okay, so now we've done our translations. And that's helped us with a bit of our writing, hopefully. We're now going to do some listening, because listening is, for most people, their weaker skills. We're trying to get some in every lesson, or most lessons now, okay? Okay, so with the listening, same with the translation there. You're going to choose either the foundation or higher, or if you've got time, you can do both of them. I'll give you um, an advance warning about the higher. It is much more detailed than the foundation, and it is not slow down. Neither is the foundation. Um, but neither of them, are, they're both faster than the WGC, you see standard speed, because these are authentic listenings. It's really good for you to listen to authentic French, not just the fake sentences that are made up for the WGC. OK, that's what's really going to improve your listening skills. OK, so if you are higher tier, fast forward to where the slides or the video of the slides go grey. And if you're finding that too, too difficult, OK. Um, so if you so fast forward to the grey for the higher tier, if it's too difficult, then rewind and do the blue. OK, the blue slides, because that's foundation. Um, so what you're going to do is follow the activities in this video and the listening videos themselves are separate on the same lesson page as this is on. So scroll down below this video. OK, so let's go on to the, the foundation activities. So this guy, Felix, is being asked, comment est ta famille? How is your family? In other words, what's your family like? Okay. So before we listen, avant d'écouter, you're going to relier les mots clés. We're going to look at some of the keywords that are going to, you're going to hear. What you need to do is match these keywords up. So you're going to write out one to nine. Write out these French phrases. We've seen them all, except for se barrager. And we haven't seen en tant que much either. Okay. What you're then going to do is all of them match to one of these here. Okay, they're not the same. So j, hopefully you remember as I have, well that's down here. That's not in the same place. 
So you're going to need to use these as a guide. See if you can fill them in the English to help you match them to the French. Think about the topic. What would that, you know, what's that most is most likely to be when we think about what the topic is, okay? Think about what is a verb here. Okay, so there's one that is to something. Which one of those is a whole verb? How do we know what would it end in? Look for those sorts of clues. So do as many as you can, and then when you're ready, check them and we'll use those words to help us as we listen. Okay, so here we go. This is uh, the keywords matched up. So pluto is rather, or it can mean quite. Moi means less. Toi, uh, toi j'ai, I have. And peu is a little or a bit. I get on well with. Otherwise, very to fight. So that's a new word there, c'est berger, to fight. And en tant que means as. So make sure you've got those. Pause and get those written down because they will help you as you listen, okay? Okay, now what you're going to do is listen to Felix. So you're going to need to um, be able to see this screen or you can look at it in the slideshow um, that, uh, if you open up the PowerPoint separately. Um, and then also be able to listen. You don't need to watch Felix as he's talking. So you could press the listening and then move back up to see this screen. What you're going to need to do is write out one to six and then you just put the letter of the part of the sentence that would finish off one to six. So if you thought if, um, Felix was saying la famille de Felix, that or rather that it was the video was telling you the family of Felix is la famille de Felix a, as a petite, quite small, you'd write one a. If you thought they were saying quite big, plutôt grand, or rather big than one b. If you think he's saying very big, then you put one c. So listen to what he says, okay? Then the next one, Felix a. This is talking about how many siblings, isn't it? Because we can see. Next one is talking about cousin or uncles and aunties. So does he do it say he has quatre or quatorze cousins or does he say that he has quatorze oncles et tantes? Okay. Felix s'entend bien avec, he gets on well with. Which person or persons does he say he gets on well with? Petit frère, parent, ou deux sœurs. Okay. Il trouve son frère, so he finds his brother. Embêtant, amusant, or egoist. How does he find his brother? Now that should give you a clue for which one of these is it definitely not, because we know he has a brother. Okay? En général, il, does he apprécie his fa sa famille, déteste sa famille, or n'aime pas sa famille? Okay, so listen to the video as many times as you want, pause as often as you need, because you're in control of it, and when you're ready, come back and check. Worst comes to worst, if this was the, an assessment uh, task, guess, you've got a th uh, one in three chance of getting co uh, correct, okay? Okay, so you should have listened to that now as many times as you need, and let's have a look at the answers. So, first of all, his family is rather big. He has two sisters and a brother. He has 14 cousins. He, has, he gets on well with his two sisters. He finds his brother selfish and he in general appreciates his family okay i'd like you to do one more thing with this listening and that is to listen to the video while you read what is written so this is what we call the transcript which basically is what he, him saying uh the, the written version of what he's saying sorry okay so what i'd like you to do this is really good listening practice and anytime you can get your hands on a text while you listen to it, you could do it with French song lyrics and things, is to read the words as you hear it. And it really gets your ears attuned to where certain words are starting and finishing, how certain words sound. So not only will improve your pronunciation, but it's one of the best things you can do for your listening skills. And then an extension task you can do after you've done that is to translate this or some of it if you've got the time today. Okay. So listen as you read, please. Okay, so the foundation work now ends here um, for the video, and then this is the higher listening, okay? Okay, so we're going to listen to Anne Dauphine being asked, Comment est ta famille? How is your family? In other words, what is your family like? So before we listen to Anne Dauphine, I want you to check what the, all these key words mean before you start listening. So pause the video and make a note of any that you don't know. Either try and work them out, look them up, or wait for the answers, okay? Okay, so we've got, I have, j'ai aîné older, 
il a, he has. On se dispute, we argue. On s'entend bien, we get on well. So obviously pause the video if there's any English you need to write down. Un peu, a bit, parfois, sometimes. Jaloux, uh, jealous, Ooh, oops. Uh, aimable, likable or friendly. Petite, small, tête is your head. Grande is big. Cans, quatre, quatorze. So we hopefully remember these numbers. These are what people often mix up. So we've got 15 cans. Quatre, four. Quatorze, fourteen. Com means as. And we've got some more parts of the body here. Doigt is finger. Pied is foot. Main is hand. And then, sorry, proche, close. And soudé means solid. That's a new word for us, okay? Right, so now we've got to grips with some of the vocabulary that's going to be coming up. What you're going to do is listen to Anne Dauphine. So you're going to need to be able to see this screen as you listen. You don't necessarily need to watch the video of her. Um, so maybe the first time, watch her speaking. And then the next time, play the video, but scroll back up to look at this screen. In your book or work area, wherever you're working, or the bottom of the worksheet, Write one to five, and then you're going to pick one letter from A to J to complete sentences one to five. So obviously five of those A to Js are not going to be used. So la frère d'Andorphine, um, Andorphine's brother, what would make sense to complete this? So before I even listen, if this is an assessment piece, I would start looking at the possibilities. So for example, la frère d'Andorphine, sa sœur, doesn't make sense. The brother of Andorphine, her sister. That doesn't make any sense, okay? Um, la frère d'Andorphine a quatre ans. The brother of Andorphine has four years. That does make sense. La frère d'Andorphine est plus jeune qu'elle. The brother of Andorphine is more young than her, is younger than her. So straight away I can see, and there's more down the list, a, a few that are possibilities to go with number one. So you might, in pencil, put the letters of the ones that it could be. So when you are listening, you make it easier to cut down okay so go through them all and work out ones what what are possibilities to me that would make sense okay um and then when you're ready listen and pick this one that you think completes it now once you've heard what she said okay okay so you, if you've unpaused it means you're ready to mark so number one uh oh yeah number one is f so the brother of Andorphine, Andorphine's brother, is older than her, et plus âgé qu'elle. She argues often with her brother, son frère, so D, okay? Her little sister, sa petite sœur, has 14 years, is 14. She gets on very well with, so obviously there's going to be a person here, it's her sister. And she says that they are, now we're going to need a plural adjective, so therefore it could have been only E or G, and it is studi, very solid, okay? It's okay, studi. Um, so like her relationship with them. So mark those, fantastic, and then we have one other activity. So what I'd like you to do now is re-listen to what Andorphine says while listening. So this is written down what she says. And I want you to listen as you read it. This is an excellent skill you can do to help improve your pronunciation and your listening skills. Because as you listen and you're trying to follow the words, you get to, um, better an idea of certain French accents, how they sound certain words, and how certain words start and finish, how they sound like. Sometimes they can sound like they're blurred, okay? Um... Once you've done that, I'd like you then to translate this transcript, translate what she has said into English. So pause the video, re-listen, and then come back to uh, this to translate it. Okay, so here's the translation answer. So I have an older brother, he's 24 years old. We argue quite often. Sometimes he's a bit jealous. I have a little sister, she is 14 years old. We get on very, very, very well. We are very close. Now, this literally says, like two fingers of a hand. That's the way the French say, like two peas in a pod. Okay? Say that you're very similar, you're very close. Because your, fing your two, two, two fingers on your hand, they cannot, two sitting together can't be separated. Well, I suppose it could be uh, cut off, but um, that's where the idea comes from. Okay? 
Right, excellent. So this is where the video work ends. If you have time in today, you can go back over um, the foundation activities if you didn't do them because that gives you extra practice. Okay, super.